What memories do you have of the mansion? Oh, of the mansion, I knew Teddy, his brother, Woogie, mm -hmm. his nickname. His brother was rich because he ran the lottery in the city. That's how he bought that mansion. This project is the Legacy in Stone Oral History Project. It's designed to empower students to collect oral history interviews with community members specifically centered around the history of the mansion on Apple Street in the Homewood neighborhood of Pittsburgh. I was so excited to get to connect with Demarius Cooper at Kappa. She is a vocal instructor there. Being able to work with her vocal students and Elaine Fink's piano students at Kappa really made this project so special. We started this project on the first day with the National Opera Company staff joining us. Janae Solomon, who is the owner of the house, came in and provided a background of the history of the house. What made the house really famous and why it has a plaque in front of it was the National Negro Opera Company. And that was the first black opera company in America. It was so nice for the students to right off the bat be able to put a face to a name and know who was working on this project. We also had this really fun activity where we gathered primary sources to learn about the Opera House firsthand. Then I got to play a clip from my oral history interview with Dr. Melvin Williams and asked students to reflect on what they learned from his interview. One of the things he said was there was a builder who went and just built a house for his family. You all looked at some printed primary sources about the house. So now that you've looked at the printed sources and you've listened to a clip, what do you think is different in the experience of using a printed primary source and an audio or oral history primary source? See how vividly he described it and the feeling that he had towards it makes you makes it feel like home more. And in any other situation, it could also like put you in more of an understanding and in their mind more because they were right there. The second day we had a chance to really dig into oral history itself and focus on training the students. And so we watched a StoryCorps video that highlighted some of the do's and don'ts of interviews. The most exciting part of the second day was Aubrey led a mock interview. She chose a character and committed to it fully. I love that students were so engaged. They did a great job of doing callbacks to things I had said earlier, asking about my personal experience instead of just about information or knowledge that I had. Earlier when you were talking, you said that railroad women were expected to portray an image. Can you go more in depth with that? It was amazing how quickly they picked up on everything we had covered. We wrapped up the second day by passing out some narrator packets with information about each of the six community narrators. The students used that information to get an idea for who they'd be talking to the following week and to write some interview questions themselves. We wrapped up that day by explaining that the following week we would actually conduct interviews. The third classroom session was our interview day. We had students split into groups of four to five. Each student was able to ask at least one open-ended question and at least one follow-up question. The whole idea of them having to have a black, a Negro opera house is because we didn't have the opportunity to share our talent with the world. What more would you say what has music had in your life? Ooh, music has been a lifeline. How did your research lead to the start of your personal project? The project started as a part of my senior recital. All of the interviews were amazing. It was so great to watch the students interact with the community narrators. Our fourth and final workshop session was just a one hour session focused on debrief. It is so exciting to now have not only an architectural history of the building, but really a specific and personal narrative from different people. 
Now that they're done, we have these six incredibly rich interviews that offer personal first-hand insights into the history of this house and the Homewood neighborhood. I think this is a really workable model that hopefully other classrooms and organizations can reproduce. We know that there are more stories to be told and we hope to continue to grow this archive here at PHLF into the future.